Let us pray. Loving God, come and meet us. Come and help us, Lord. Come and inspire your word to us. And direct us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have you ever been in a place in your life where there is so much unrest an upheaval that you feel like running and hiding? Have you ever been at a place in your life where you're shaken at the core of your being and when you're so shaken you feel as if there is no way you can stay on point or stay on mission? Philip finds himself at a point where the church of Jesus Christ is being persecuted for sharing the gospel. Remember, Philip was not one of the original disciples. Philip had simply signed on to help the church during a time of growth, and now one of his partners, a man by the name of Stephen, had been killed, and Philip was seeing what was about to happen and the temptation would be for him to say, I quit or I run and hide. Don't know if you've ever been at a stage in your journey where door after door seems closed, where disappointments increase and failures multiply and setbacks seem to repeat themselves, where it seems as if all that's coming to you is defeat. Anybody ever been at a stage where you are attacked spiritually, where you have no spiritual desire, where you don't want to connect with God, you don't want to pray, you don't want to be among anybody who is saying anything or doing anything with God, where physically you are fatigued, and where you feel overwhelmed and helpless. It's easy when you are under attack for you to pull away. But today's scripture is very instructive because even though Philip was running away from a Jerusalem which was in unrest, Philip knew who had called him and for what purpose he was called. And so Philip goes to Samaria to declare the love and the truth and the deliverance of God. Those of us who were here last week know that we began this sermon series by talking about the difference between Jews and Samaria, Samaritans. The Samaritans were considered racially impure. They were cousins, but not good cousins. They were considered religiously inferior. They worshiped God, but not in the right place, not in the right circumstances. They observed Moses' law. They looked to the coming of the Messiah, but the Jews couldn't stand them, and they couldn't stand the Jews either. Sometimes, even when you try your best, you are not good enough for some people. But Philip understood what God's call to him was. To take the good news, 
to take this message of salvation through Jesus Christ to people who needed it. Philip, coming out of the unrest in Jerusalem, could have said to himself, I am defeated, I am broken, I just can't do it. And I don't know if ever in your life you have gotten to a point where you say, I can't do it. But I'm suggesting to you that it's not over until God says it's over. Philip goes in the power and in the presence of God and he goes to Samaria. And even though Jews and Samaritans don't like each other, something wonderful starts to happen. Paralytics become healed. People who are possessed get delivered. Transformation and renewal is happening. And P Philip recognizes something about God which may be helpful to all of us. When you open up, God will open new opportunities for you. If you can't open up, then sometimes nothing happens. I want to suggest to somebody here this morning that even if the background and the noise in your life is such that it makes you want to close up, open up in the name of Jesus and see what God will do. As Philip opened up his life, new blessings, new opportunities, new challenges started to unfold. Most of us in here have muscles. Well, I think everybody has muscles. Can you? Now, some of us, we can't see it because there's more other stuff around it, but there's a muscle there, and there's a muscle here, and there are muscles all over. You can't move unless these muscles are working. The challenge for every muscle, I'm told, is that the muscles like to develop a memory. So if you did it before, that's as far as the muscle wants to go. Sometimes in my life and in your life, we don't experience different things because we are simply going as far as the muscle memory of our lives. This is what I know. This is what I've done. And I can't go any further. Look upon what Philip did. This Jewish disciple from Jerusalem goes and positions himself on the road to the wilderness. Does that make sense? Put in yourself where God says you should be. If you can position yourself where God has called you to be, you will experience new and brand and dramatic things. Philip was in the right place and God opened the doors. As the story starts to take a new life from him not feeling as if he couldn't. From him not feeling as if he shouldn't. From him not feeling as if his life could not achieve any purpose. He is now in a place where God is about to use him to unfold something which had never happened before in the church. Down the road comes a man from Ethiopia. This man works for a woman in Ethiopia 
whose name is like the name of Pharaoh. It's not like Candace Baker, even though it says Candace. Candace really referred to Pharaoh, the equivalent of Pharaoh or queen mother. That is, it was a term used to describe multiple groups of women who had risen to become queen in a man's world. So there was this mighty woman when the Kushite Empire was one of the strongest empires in the world, stronger than Egypt, who was governing that empire at the time when this traveler was on the road. This man works for her. And if you worked for the queen, then it meant that you rode in a chariot. And the chariot would have the inscription of the queen on it. Let me help you with a modern day analogy. When you go to the parking lot, whether this one out here or the one in Citibank, every automobile has an inscription on it. Right? Some say Ford, some say Honda. Some say BMW, some say Buick, GMC, Mercedes, Lexus. They all have some brand on it. So this chariot is coming through with the inscription of this powerful woman on it. And in that chariot is this man who had gone to Jerusalem to worship. This is where the story takes off. Follow me. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship, but he had a challenge. What was he? A eunuch. He was a castrated male. A castrated male, according to the tradition could not fully participate in the life of the community, could not take part in all the rituals, could not fully embrace all that worship had to offer. There are a lot of castrated males in today's world. If you think about the prison system and the impact of the prison system on most of our males. Many of us either have a friend or a relative who has gone through the prison system. Well, if you come out of the prison system, usually you can't work, you can't vote, you can't hold certain offices, you can't fully participate in life as it should be. Here was this man he was controlling the money of this mighty queen. He had gone to Jerusalem to worship. But the society had defined on him that you are limited, that you are castrated. Can I speak to the woman this morning? If there is a man around you, whether he's a son, a grandson, whether he's connected with you in any particular way, don't castrate him. Across the board, most women are doing better than black men. You take it out of America and take it down to Brazil. You take it through the islands or take it to the continent of Africa, or take it to England, most black men are experiencing significant challenges and burdens of being the men that God intended them to be. The possibilities for Families, if men are able to become who God wants them to be, is tremendous and powerful. As hard as it is sometimes, 
Don't castrate him. The Ethiopian treasurer who wanted to worship God is looked upon in a funny way. We look in the scripture and Philip's name appears in the Greek text nine times. This man's name doesn't appear a single time. Have you thought about that? Which means that he is regarded as being anonymous. But he comes and meets Philip who is going through a hard time, but Philip who realizes that even though I am going through a hard time personally, God has placed me here so I can be blessed, be a blessing to this man who is searching and seeking for something larger and bigger for his life. And both men meet. Philip meets this traveler from Ethiopia and they share the word of God and something dynamic and powerful happens when they share the word of God that the man says, I want a new identity. Baptize me. And when he is baptized, suddenly this man who could not fully participate realizes now that in Christ he is whole in Christ he is well in Christ he is a total human being in Christ he is no longer a stranger in Christ he has access to the throne of God it happened because Philip did not say my mission is to those in Jerusalem. It did not happen. It happened because Philip didn't say to himself, I am simply going through a hard time and I don't want to be bothered with this call and this mission of God. It happened because Philip was obedient to be in the right place. But it happened also because Philip said, Can I take the risk to come into your chariot? Jump into the Mercedes or into the Honda or into the Lexus. Go to a place where you shouldn't be and begin to listen. Because usually when you're with someone one-on-one -on -one, and if you're listening, they tell you what really is going on. How many times we think that the message gets shared from situations like a pulpit or in a church or with a group of dancers dancing or a choir singing. None of this happens in a sanctuary. All of it happens out on the road where a man who is in distress but who understands the calling and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life becomes obedient to God and says, God, I am available to be used by you. And as he is available, God sends somebody for him to pour living water into their life. I want to ask you this morning, as you're here in the presence of God, if you're here understanding the power of the gospel, the power of the possibility of being able to step across the barriers, to step across the limitations, to step across what, what, what life says you shouldn't so that you can share the good news of God in Jesus Christ. Dr. Howard Hendricks, author and teacher, 
tells the story of a young man who strayed from the Lord but was finally brought to God through the help of a friend who saw him, who listened to him, who loved him, who allowed him to repent and to come for restoration. When asked by Dr. Hendricks, how it felt to be away from God. The young man said it felt as if I was out at sea, in deep water, going through deep trouble. And all the friends on the shore were hurling biblical accusations about penalty and wrong and what judgment I deserve. But he says there was this one Christian brother who actually swam out to get me and would not let me go. He said, I fought him, but he pushed aside my fighting. I grasped him. He grasped me. He put a life jacket around me, and he took me to the shore. I want to ask you this week, how committed you are to going to get somebody who is traveling down a path where it seems as if they're going to miss out on the joys and the power and the presence and the love of God. Are you available to be in the right place? To stand with them and to love them. This story has an interesting ending. After Philip baptizes the man, the scripture tells us, Philip disappears, but the man goes on his way to Ethiopia, rejoicing, happy, filled with tremendous joy and satisfaction that the critical thing that he needed for his journey was now present. He knew the Lord. And he knew the love of God. This eunuch is credited as being the first missionary to Ethiopia. As we know, the Ethiopian church existed long before the Roman Catholic church and the Eastern Orthodox Church, one man, one woman who listened to the voice of God and is not afraid of Crossing the line can make a big difference in the life of other people. So can I ask you this morning, how much hell are you going through? How many doors have been closed for you? How much noise and how much roaring is happening in the background of your life? And as you think about that, just ask yourself, what does God want me to do? Philip placed himself in the presence of God and it unfolded for him. Maybe it can all unfold for me and for you. As the choir leads us in this song, just meditate right where you are and ask God to show you how that which you are running away from can catapult you to being a source of grace and blessing for someone else. Ask God to show you how when it seems as if your walls are 
are imploding. How it means God wants you to move into something next and something different. Ask God to show you what it means to walk in his presence and to do his will. Listen as the choir sings to us. If you're here this morning, you just have a sense that God wants to move your life in a whole fresh direction that you you want God just to release you from that which has you backed up and feeling disempowered. I invite you to come so we can pray together at the altar. Just come and say, God, I'm here. And I know in your presence and through the power of your spirit that if you are alive in me, amazing things are possible with my life. Just come from your seat and says, Lord, I'm here. And I won't go back. Oh, so right now.